Just a reminder, you can watch full episodes on my app or join me at JoyceMeyer.org. I'll see you soon. You have authority, but you have to exercise that authority. You have to believe that you have authority and walk in the world as someone who has authority. Hold your head up. Don't be afraid of everything that comes along. Don't worry about so many things. Believe that God's for you, that he's in you, and that you have power. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and power over all the power the enemy possesses and nothing shall by any means harm you. Now that doesn't mean that you can't break a bone or fall down or, or hurt yourself in some way, but it does mean that ultimately God will take care of you. I mean, Paul said to live as Christ, to die as gain. So we don't even have to be afraid of death because for a believer, death is just like going through a door into another realm because we're, we're eternal beings. We're going to live forever with God. Mark 16, 17, the Bible says, these signs will follow those who believe. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. And it goes on and on and on. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will get well. Well, how much of that do we see going on today? I mean, hardly any at all. People have given up on things like this. You know, I still pray for the sick. When I have an opportunity, I will lay my hands on a sick person and pray for them because I believe that the anointing that's in a believer can drive out the sickness in somebody else. And you need to believe that also. Pray for people that God will heal them. Don't let the devil take advantage of you. These signs will follow those who believe. You know, not just those who believe in Jesus, but those who believe that these signs will follow them. What do you believe about things like you say, well, I don't know, I don't, I don't, believe, in, I don't believe in that. Well, it's sad that we're not taught very much about these kinds of things. And you can't believe something if you've never heard it or taught about it. Read the Word and see what it says. Study the Word. You have power over the enemy, but you have to exercise that power. The Bible talks about rebuking the devil, binding the devil. We need to realize that we have authority. The Bible says we have weapons for our warfare. You know, there's wars everywhere. Wars in our mind, wars in the spirit, wars in nations, wars in our emotions. Wars in marriages, wars in families, but we have weapons. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. We're not, we're not fighting a natural battle, we're fighting a spiritual battle. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. A stronghold is a place where the enemy digs in and hides himself and tries to torment us from that particular place. And one of the places he likes to hide in is get an area in our mind and get us believing something that's absolutely not true. If you were listening yesterday, we were talking about how the Bible says that you'll have what you believe, be it unto you even as you believe. Well, naturally the devil wants us to believe lies. Let's just say that the enemy's got you thinking nobody likes you. Well, nobody likes me. Everybody rejects me. Well, if that's what you believe, you know what's going to happen? You're going to actually produce behavior that's going to cause people not to like you. But God says that he loves you, and you can have favor with him, and he will give you favor with people. So when the enemy tries to tell you nobody likes you, you just say, well, that's a lie, and I'm going to pray for God to give me favor with the right people in my life. And you pray for God to give you right friends, not just any friends, but right friends. Don't listen to the lies of Satan. But you will listen to the lies of the enemy if you don't know the truth. And the only way that you're going to know the truth is to study this wonderful, amazing book, the Word of God, the Bible. There's so much power in the Word of God.
45 years I've been studying the Word. You say, oh my gosh, 45 years. I wish that I had been studying that long. Well, start today. Start today and start learning and start believing. When you read, believe it. Even if you don't totally understand it. Say, God, I don't totally understand this, but give me understanding. I I'm, I'm believe what you say. But you can't get into reasoning and you can't try to understand everything with your head. You have to understand it with your heart. We need to know the truth. We need to walk in our authority. Hold your head up high and know who you are in Christ. I'm a child of God and God's power is in me. And I am not going to let the enemy walk all over me and rule my life. I am going to learn the word of God so when Satan lies to me, I will recognize those lies and I can cast them down. In Luke chapter 4, the Bible says that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, interesting, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. Now, God tempts no man, but here Jesus was led into a place where he was going to be tempted because there were some tests that he needed to pass, not because God thought he might fail him, he already knew that he wouldn't, but the devil needed to know that Jesus was not going to put up with his nonsense. And he needs to know that from us too. And the devil began to lie to Jesus. And there are three separate occasions where he lied to him. Jesus was hungry and he said, well, if you are the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then he took him up on a high hill and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I think one translation says just once. And I love that just once lie. Just once. I'll give you all of this. Jesus didn't want all of that. He just wanted his relationship with God. And so he once again said, it is written and spoke the word to him. Third time when Satan tempted him and lied to him, he said, it is written. In other words, Jesus talked back to the devil. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, this lady has totally lost her mind. I remember one woman saying, when I turned you on the first time, you were saying, the devil said to Jesus, and Jesus said to the devil. The devil said to Jesus, and Jesus said to the devil. And she said, I have to tell you the truth, I thought you were totally crazy. Well, don't take my word for it. Look at Luke chapter 4, the first 11 verses, and read them for yourself. It's right there. A lot of times people don't talk about these things because they don't know how to fully explain them. I don't have to fully understand this. I'm just going to do what Jesus did. And when the devil lies to me, I'm going to quote the word back to him. When he says, God's mad at you, I'm going to say, no, he's not, because God has forgiven me. I have repented, and he is not mad at me. God is a God of mercy. Well, Joyce, now you've messed up one too many times. It's too late for you. It's never too late. It's never too late for a new beginning. It's never too late for a fresh start. Don't listen to the lies of Satan. The Word is an offensive weapon. You go after Satan with the Word of God, and he's afraid of the Word because he knows that there's power in the Word of God. When I talk, just regular talk, talk about the weather, talk about the news, talk, 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 there's no power in that. But when I'm sharing the Word of God with you, there's power in it. And if you're spiritually sharp at all, you know there's power in it because you can sense the power in it and you feel it working in your life even as I'm speaking. I love in my conferences when there's people there yeah, I love it when there's people there, but I love looking at the people and watching their faces. I, I love watching how the Word of God affects people and how you can see the change come over them as the Word of God tears down the lies of Satan that they've been told. People will cry, they laugh, the Word of God changes us. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.